Hello there! Welcome back to It Gets Lonely Here, where we have a pretty nice picture right in front of us. I'm not even joking, I just want I just want another reason to just show this. <laughs> no other reason, like what do you want me to say here? Yes. You gathered so much, but is there a problem? I'm not making you uncomfortable, am I? It is. It is not, you say, that she is making you uncomfortable, per se, but this is rather awkward. You did not expect it. This at all. Of course, I don't think anyone would expect it at all, anyways. And she is now worried with the. Uh, with, she's not worried that this is unhygienic. Un unhygienic. Yes. That is a uh, kind of unhygienic when you think about it. The princess blinks. She is the very picture of innocence, which is. Funny, really. Given her figure, her finger is still inside, it still nestled in, in, against her tongue. <laughs> yeah, there's not a whole lot you can do right now. I don't know what that means, but I don't know what that what you mean by that exactly. But I've heard this is the best way to take care of us. My nursemaids used to do this for me when I was a child. It was, it's what you're supposed to do. Okay. I don't know how that works exactly. Is it like just spitting in somebody's wound? Like, what the hell? And you ask? Your, you ask, your voice catching in your throat. Did her nursemaids keep staunching her wound, stitching her wounds with her mouth when she was when she grew older? Well, no. All my nursemaids was dismissed when I was eight. Years old. That's the normal, normal way of things. I had my lady maids to look after me then. Okay. How very interesting. And did they ever clean her wounds like this? No. The princess says. Smiling maliciously, malevolently, because I'm not clumsy enough to cut myself silly. Okay. Now that was a quite the sharp resort. Sharp retort. Eh. <laughs> you did not expect it. Face turns even redder. If such a thing is possible, though, this might perhaps be your benefit. Uh, to your benefit, with some luck, of uh, uh, with some luck, all of your blood will flow into your face, rather than into your, rather than to your finger, and your bleeding will stop. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Has it, it hasn't stopped? Your injury was not deep. It was not a deep one. There should be no need for the princess to keep on sucking, but she still is. Is she a vampire? I wouldn't put it past her. <laughs> you are not accustomed to to the in the intermittent or the fact that word is 
of the snake mirror. It is making your heart flutter. The princess knew what her mouth was doing to you. You are sure you would not be so familiar. She barely knew you for like 24 fucking hours. What the hell? <laughs> you feel quietly cherishing confidence that she would scorn you for your feelings and deem them unnatural. Okay. It would it would not be the first time. At this point, you should be used to rejection. It still stings though. Well, rejection's a thing is a bitch anyways at times. Uh, it's standing it's stinging much, much more than any thorn or any rose ever could. Hey, it's part of life, damn it. The day passed. The, the days passed. Following your misadventures in the rose garden, in a rela in a relaxed, unharmed sort of manner. Your maid dashes through the forest. As your mind dashes through, the forest is beginning to feel like a distant memory. So much so, you could scarcely recall the raw, naked fear you once felt as you fled for your life. There was no running to be had while you were working for the princess. Okay. You would have nowhere else to run. And in any event, there is no longer any reason to run. Except after the princess, <laughs> of course. The shadows which once tormented you have long la at long last begun to recede. You can scarcely recall as you lay down in your bed the petty cruelest you yeah cruelties you were subjected to by your classmates at the conservatory. There they no longer matter. Your attention is fo is focused not upon yourself. But on upon the princess. Hell yeah. Now you got a friend. But knowing the name of the entire series, I'm guessing it's gonna get lonely. <laughs> the more time you expend with her, you ex expend with her, the more you come to you come to care for her. You have become quite uh, bestowed with her. But you are yet to realize it. Well, I never. <laughs> How very ignorant can one girl be of her own feelings? Or you just dense as hell. The princess is not half. But so ignorant as you are, though despite having spent her whole life within the palace walls, the weight of her own feelings is unknown to her, and during one stormy night, she chooses to make them known to you. Okay. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? You are in the princess's chambers later. Perhaps then you ought to be later than later than is strictly appropriate. It is dark outside and there is little little uh, save the light of the moon to envelop, envelop it. That 
and the fire, which crackles in uh, the ga grate. You have only just finished stocking the fu very fire. Fire, and now you rise. I'm concerned that I have enough of the hat thing. You look to the princess, who is lying in her bed, and you bid her a good night, as you have many nights passed. Okay. With a neat curtsy, you turn to leave. But the princess, uh, slightly uh, voiced, gives you a pause. Uh, poise. Wait, dear one. Do not go, not just yet. Okay. Perplexed, you pause. Then look back at the princess. Though she is smiling, her expression is unusually wan. Is she alright? I don't know. Oh, oh, I'm sure. I'll be fine. It's just nights like this, you know? Which makes me feel a little... Out of sorts. Okay. In which way? And what, you ask, does that mean? Uh, does she mean by that? Only that it is very cold and very dark. Okay. I know where this is going. And it's very windy. Besides, I'm afraid there's... Uh, there'll be a storm later. It was awfully cloudy earlier. When we went out for a wa our walk. Yeah. And? <laughs> the princess is not mistaken. About that, the sky with a pair of your pro prominent about the garden earlier it was gray and steely. The wind faintly, faintly clo cold, literally cold. You could hear the wind rattling mournfully against the pan, yeah, against the panes in the princess's bedchamber. Shall I be concerned? <laughs> the princess's castle is built of stone, and it is well for fortified, but even with the fire, it is rather cold. You do not like to think of the how much cold, chillier by comparison it will be in, in your humble bedchamber. Which is not fortunate enough to have its own fireplace. Dang it. It might sound child it might sound childish. But I've always found it hard to sleep on stormy nights like this. They make me feel uncomfortable. You look at the princess. With no small degree of sympathy. Of course. Your bedchamber has like no bed. I, oh, no, not no bed. No fireplace. No longer clad in her bright red dress, she looks oddly, uncommonly vulnerable. Un un yeah, uncommonly vulnerable. Okay. Well, is she really be all right? Uh, all alone in her oversized bed, in her high ceiling bedchamber. You know, it's silly to of you to complain. It, it contemplates such a query. Why would you not be all right? 
There is nobody in the castle to hurt her. But still, you threaten her. I should for her. Oh. You're in a giant freaking castle. There's only two of you. The princess and her maid. <laughs> As her lady maid, it is your job to fret for her. You would never want your mistress to feel unhappy. You ask the princess, what is she? Would, what is it she would have to do? And the princess perks it up. Uh, perks up the up at this pleased perhaps that you are taking the, the initiative and from here I want to know what she's gonna be asking so I'm gonna end the episode here so I can constantly be questioning so I hope you guys have a great well time and a great day too well, I question what the heck they're plot- what the princess is plotting to do. But, I'll see you guys next time. While I question. <laughs>